Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises um, to um, learn about AWS services. And these workshops and exercises are published to our website, aws-dozo.com. Today, we are going to talk about, in fact, we are starting a new series called AWS AI Services Programming Series. And this is the part one of the series where we are going to talk about um, poly, translate, and text rack AI services from AWS. Let's try to get an overview about AWS AI services, and then we'll talk about these three services in particular, and then we'll talk about what workshop we are going to do on that. So um, AWS provides uh, a number of AI services which are used uh, in areas of vision or uh, voice or speech, language, building charts, forecasting, recommendations. In fact, this list is not completed. They are, they are adding a service almost every day. Uh, and these services are exposed as um, APIs. So any developer, who wants to, say, for instance, uh, do the analysis of the image can simply go and use the recognize, uh, recognition service for the image analysis. Anyone who wants to build uh, a chat bot can use the Lex service. Any developer can use the Lex service. Similarly, if you want to translate uh, from one language to another, you can go and uh, simply use the translate service. So you don't need to have any machine learning experience uh, you don't need to build any of your own models. Uh, you don't need to uh, have any kind of uh, training data, or testing data, uh, use some algorithm to build your model, deploy the model, and then use it. These models are already deployed in our AI service, in, in the AWS AI services as an API. All you have to do as a developer to call it and make use of it. So they are already pre-trained pre uh, models. So today we are going to talk about three of these services in particular uh, as a part one of the series. And of course, we plan to cover every other service uh, in, in the course of completing this series. And the three services we are going to focus in this part is uh, Poly, Translate, and TextRack. So what is Poly? So Poly is a service which converts text into lifelike speeches. OK, and when you are doing conversion, actually, you can really define that. How do you what kind of style you want to choose for doing the lifelike uh, lifelike speech? So like you can go for a, a news reading kind of uh, style, which is kind of very flat and monotonous. Or you can also go for a conversational uh, speaking style. So you can choose both types of uh, style, uh, but the voice which uh, or the speech which uh, the text gets converted to is not robotic. It's very lifelike uh, human uh, speech. Now, uh, there are multiple voices which uh, you can choose from in order to convert into uh, no, uh, lifelike uh, speech, and it supports multiple languages. It also gives you customization capability. For instance, if you want to customize uh, pronunciation of certain words in a certain way, then you can use lexicons uh, to do uh, that kind of configuration. So that's a very quick summary about uh, how Poly works. Let's see how Translate works. Translate is probably one of the simplest uh, simplest service you can, uh, you can think of. Uh, it simply converts um, one language text uh, or sentence into another language uh, sentence uh, or paragraph. I mean, depends on what what size of um, uh, source uh, you are providing. Uh, and it supports uh, actually uh, 55 languages and their uh, variants. Uh, so between these 55 languages or variants, it can convert from one language to another. Uh, it can automatically detect the source uh, language. So when you're doing the programming, actually you can tell that this is the English language I'm choosing, or you can say, okay, uh, translate, you identify yourself what the source language is. So all you have to give is to give the uh, text or a sentence or a paragraph you want to uh, translate, tell the target language, and translate can identify the source language itself. Or you can also provide source language if you say, 
I, I, let me let me give it okay so that's how the translate uh, service works uh, and the next one is text this is a very interesting service uh, this is a service which can do um, uh, which can do analysis of your scanned document uh, so literally literally i mean if you have a, a scanned document and say hey can you go and detect text on this document it can uh, it can detect text on the document and uh, and it is not like OCR that uh, you know uh, simply doing the scanning of the you know, detecting the text on the image and, and that's it. No, uh, actually it can do uh, some very smart analysis. And, and just to give you an example, if suppose you give it a form, so you give a scan uh, form as a source, it can actually identify the fields on the form and can also, um, in fact, the right word is it can analyze the fields on the form and the values of the form. And it can, can, it, can, it can give you a key value pair saying, hey, on this form, I see following fields and following values as a key value it can give you back as analysis. So literally you can build a very smart automation with this service where uh, you have a tax form or some other form, it simply scans, gets the key value pair and simply use that for the automation purpose. Uh, similar to the form, it can also do uh, table analysis. Uh, so you can uh, say my source data is like a table, and it can also uh, uh, scan the uh, scan the uh, table data, uh, or or you can not well not scan it. The, write the word again is analyze the analyze the uh, analyze the table data, and can present to you in a format that you can uh, consume it for uh, either uh, yeah, reporting purpose or automation purpose. So. The message I want to convey here is that it is not about only uh, scanning the text, but it can do really smart analysis of the text based on the format it has uh, to give you data in such a way that you can consume it and build automation on top of that. So these are three services we are going to uh, use today in our workshop. And what we are going to build is pretty straightforward. So first we'll go um, in the first exercise, uh, first task of the workshop, we'll go and convert text into speech. Yeah, simple, yeah? Let, we'll do that. Uh, then we will, uh, in the second part, what we'll do is that we'll take um, uh, a sentence and we'll try to convert from English language to German language. And in the third one, uh, we will have uh, two, uh, two uh, source data. One will have like a simply, uh, a scan copy of, and, and I, I simply will detect text out of it. In the second one, uh, I have a form. Uh, I took one uh, UK um, landing form uh, from the immigration office, a blank form, and that form we are going to scan and see uh, if, if it can identify the fields on the form. So these are two exercises we are going to do. Um, and in order to do uh, this workshop, actually, uh, we are we have a uh, workshop published on our website aws-dojo.com. Uh, this is the link of this workshop. Uh, this link we have also provided in the description box of the YouTube um, uh, of the YouTube uh, uh, video, uh, and you can uh, follow this workshop step by step instructions uh, to complete the three scenarios we talked about. So let's see what it takes to do this workshop. So this is our uh, website, aws-dozu.com, where this uh, workshop has been uh, published. And uh, you can see that these are three scenarios we are going to build. And you can click on this start the workshop button to uh, start the workshop button to um, uh, start the workshop. Uh, so click on this uh, link and it will open uh, the uh, workshop for you. So if I go, uh, you can see there are six steps to perform. Uh, and all you have to do is simply follow the steps one by one and uh, to complete this whole workshop. So the first step is pretty straightforward. You need to have uh, an AWS uh, account in order to complete this workshop. Uh, and then you can, if you don't have, you can use this link to simply create a trial account for yourself. Then we'll set up a development environment. And development environment will set up inside Amazon Cloud9. Cloud9 is a web-based ID uh, as a part of uh, AWS stack of services. And we are going to use this ID to build our three uh, scenarios. So you simply launch uh, 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 your Cloud9 uh, environment. Uh, you give it a nice name called, say, Dojo environment. 
then you select uh, operating system. We are going a free tier, T2 micro is enough, on Ubuntu box we need, and we simply create uh, the environment. Once the environment is created, we need to have Python Boto, Boto 3 SDK in order to complete this exercise. So what we are going to do is that we are going to first update uh, the environment, and after that, we will check the Python version. Uh, it is 3.649. Uh, and then we are going to deploy Python Boto 3. So we will deploy the uh, Python SDK uh, for AWS, uh, uh, Boto SDK, and then this Boto SDK we are going to use to complete our exercise with uh, the three scenarios. So once uh, our Boto SDK has been deployed, our environment is good, up and running. Now we can start trying the three scenarios. Uh, so first one is uh, programming with uh, Amazon Poly. So in this case, uh, in the same uh, Cloud9 environment, uh, we simply click on a new file, uh, and then we put the following code in the file. Uh, and um, it's pretty straightforward code, guys. We are saying that let's create a client to the Poly, and then call this synthesize speech uh, method. And then we are saying that um, uh, my output is uh, MP3. This is the text which I want to convert uh, into voice or speech. And this is the lifelike voice ID. So I want to use the voice of Sally because it's a, that's a human voice we are going to use. And when my, uh, and this method will simply convert this text into uh, speech uh, that we get back into response. And then from the response, we can read the audio stream and I'm simply writing it back to an MP3 file. So pretty straightforward and simple code. Um, by the way, just for your information, we use Sally um, uh, Wise, but you have many other choices which you could have chosen uh, as a Wise over here. So then we go and simply run this uh, dozo poly.py file, which is this code uh, we have created. We first save uh, this with the name dozo uh, poly.py, and then we simply go and uh, run uh, this uh, uh, this code. Once we run this code, actually what you'll find is that, uh, of course, it converted my text into speech, and that speech file is uh, created into my environment. Now this file you can download on your local box, like using the download link, and then you can run it. I mean, you can play it, and when you play, you will find that it has converted your text into the speech. So this was a pretty Straightforward um, example where you can convert a text into speech. I strongly recommend that you play with the other languages and uh, languages, especially try to use some lexicons to see if you can really customize certain uh, words punct uh, punctuation in, in a specific uh, way. So I leave that to your experimentation. Uh, my purpose was to give you a kick start here. So once we're done with the poly, we go and talk about the translate now. So that's the next step, programming with Amazon Translate. So let's start with this uh, service now. So in this case, we go and create a new file in uh, in our environment, and then we put this particular code, when it's uh, smaller than the previous code. Uh, and the, the way it works is that uh, we simply create a client to the, uh, to the translate, um, yeah, to the translate service. And then we call this translate text method, where we are saying that this is my text, uh, or this is my sentence, in fact, and it could be as big as, big as paragraph, guys. Um, and uh, this is my um, this is my text which I want to sentence which I want to translate. This is my source language, and this is my target language. Again, the source language is optional because if you don't provide it, uh, actually translate can automatically identify the source language. And then we simply translate, it simply translates. And when it translates, we can get that out of this uh, translate text node. So what we are going to do that, uh, that we simply save it as a dozo translate.py file, uh, as a Python file, and then we simply run this file. When you run this file, actually it shows the output of the translate over here so that the world which was here, people love AWS Dojo workshop and exercises has been now translated like this. So again, I leave it to you to play uh, translate and translation in the language you want. There are 55 languages and variants supported. So of course you might be interested to translate in certain language you know or you're proficient in.
Okay, so let's move on to the last service in this workshop that is text rect. And this is again another very interesting uh, service which can do uh, the analysis of the scanned document. So in this case, uh, first we are going to uh, upload two documents which we want to scan. Uh, one is your text rect sample one dot png, and second is two dot png. And these two uh, uh, these two um, uh, files are or scanned documents we are uploading to this. Uh, Dojo text rect uh, uh, bucket. This uh, bucket we um, uh, we created uh, just for the just for the workshop purpose. And then once you upload this file, uh, actually these files are provided over here as a link, so you can download from here and upload to your S3 bucket. Uh, let's see what the first file has, and, and this is the first file. And this file is uh, is is nothing but it is a scan of. Uh, AWS uh, security white paper. So actually, I went, I opened the AWS security white paper and, and took a scan of a part of the paper. That's it, simple. And my purpose, my first uh, task is to uh, able to detect this text out of my um, out of my image or scan document. So in order to do so, we create a new file. Uh, and then we create the following code in the file. And it's pretty straightforward, guys. So we are saying that Let's create a client to text rect first, then call a method called detect document text, and we take um, uh, a parameter called document. Where is the document? And we are saying that document is into S3 bucket. This is the bucket name, and this is the name of the object. Yeah, so remember the first one, uh, and, and this is the PNG file, which stores this information, this text here. And after that, uh, we are simply, yeah, we are calling this uh, detect uh, text document, which uh, simply does the analysis of my text. And then we uh, simply loop into this response. Uh, so first we uh, go into items. Uh, uh, so the information is stored by block by block. Uh, so we go into the blocks uh, and then we say, if uh, uh, one of the item, uh, a block type is line, then give me the text because that is what I'm interested in. So I'm just simply printing out that text. So um, after that, we we save this uh, file or this code as uh, uh, dojo uh, text track one dot pi, and then we uh, simply uh, run it. And when I run it, you can see here it has extracted the text file and and output in my console. So this is exactly the same text which is presented in this scan document over here. Yeah, So that was uh, the first example where we used one uh, scan document to uh, extract text out of it. Now the next task, task is even more interesting where we are going to scan one, one, scan, uh, one form. Uh, and in this case, I choose this UK border control landing form actually guys. Uh, and this is an, uh, uh, an empty form, but you can try it with the fill form as well. Uh, so this is an empty form. And, and what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to use TextRack to analyze this form, uh, form to be able to read what fields it contains and what are the values of the field. And of course, I'm going to get value, uh, value uh, blank in this case. Uh, but again, I leave it to you if you want to fill a form and, and use that one here for analysis. I leave that experiment to you. Now, when uh, you are doing this kind of analysis, uh, uh, remember for detecting the text, we use this method called um, detect, detect document text. Now, in this case, we change the, change the method. And method is called analyze document, because now you're analyzing the document for a specific format. And actually, you can select a format as a form or a table, uh, OK? Uh, so um, you, you do this, use this method to analyze uh, this form. And then whatever results come out, uh, it's a it's a large uh, it's a large output. Uh, uh, I think it's a dictionary adjacent uh, format. I think I think it's a dictionary format. And then you have to parse it. Uh, and for that purpose, there is a um, parser available on GitHub. What I have done is that I have provided the code of the uh, parser over here so that you can see code yourself and how parser is doing it. So you can download this uh, trp.python file. Uh, and actually, you can uh, upload it in your uh, Cloud9 environment so that you can also see the code of it, OK? Uh, um, so so uh, simple is uh, that trp.python file is actually a parser for the output of the analyze uh, underscore document uh, method. 
So this is the file we have uh, simply added. So you can simply download uh, this Python file, add to your Cloud9 environment. You can see the code if you're curious to know how this parser is working. Now we simply write the code to analyze the document. Uh, and that is that code is stored as a dozo text set two dot Python. This is the code and it's pretty straightforward. So uh, here you see one change that since we are using trp.py uh, library, so we have to import that uh, for the uh, parsing the output. Then we are calling, in this case, one method is we're calling the analyze document, not detect text. Uh, and then same parameter, uh, where is my data? My data is in S3 bucket, and this is my bucket name, and this is my, uh, uh, this is my object name. Now, uh, S3 bucket is one way to provide inputs to these methods, but other method is also you can provide this input as a bytes. So in both methods, the earlier method in the earlier exercise, uh, task versus this task, in both you can also provide uh, this input uh, files as a bytes. But I try to keep it simple by uploading them into an S3 bucket. And then we provide the feature types. And in this case, since we are scanning a form, we are saying feature type is form. But if it is a table, we could have say hey, it's a table. If it is both, then you could have put both as well. Okay. So once we have done that. Then uh, it scans the document. This analyzes the document, not scans, it analyzes the document. And then we are simply uh, parsing uh, the document using the using the TRP library. And then we are simply uh, looping in into that, going page by page, and then I want to know, the, okay, in this page, do you have a form? Yeah, and do you have a field? Yeah, can I know the field name and value? And you're simply printing the field name and value. Pretty straightforward code, yeah? Now, if we go and run this code, you can see that we run this code, uh, okay? And when on this code, you can see that it's printing my uh, my form name over here. So field name, field name here and value. And value is null or non-selected like that because obviously um, uh, this form is, uh, is is blank. But if you use a field form, it will try to uh, give you the value on the form. So this is the example of how you can scan a form to detect uh, uh, fields on the form and of, of also the field values. So this uh, finishes the second uh, uh, second uh, task in the workshop uh, of the, uh, workshop. Uh, and that's pretty much for this uh, part of the series. Uh, next step is to simply go and clean up your environment so that you don't incur any cost post this workshop. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the part one of the series. In part two, three, four onwards, we are going to cover other services giving similar type of implementation scenarios. Okay, uh, so that was that was all for today. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, uh, yeah, uh, please uh, please let us uh, please let us know. You can provide us uh, feedback either on our uh, YouTube channel or uh, you can also uh, uh, reach out to us through this contact us button. Uh, you have many similar workshops and exercises uh, in AWS hyphen dozo to perform uh, different uh, types of uh, scenarios to learn about AWS services. Uh, please use that. If you like this particular uh, workshop, please click on the like button. Please subscribe to our, uh, to um, our channel our channel. Uh, hope you um, yeah hope you like this video. Uh, thanks for your time. Have a nice day. Bye bye.